Matthew chapter 22, verse number 41 and verse number 45. Allow me to share this text with you and use it uh, to introduce even our speaker on this morning, if you will. Amen. The 22nd chapter of the book of Matthew, verse number 41 through verse number 45. Matthew chapter 22, beginning at verse number 41. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They said unto him, The son of David. He said unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord? All right, saying, God. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? That's the reading of Matthew chapter 22, verse number 41 through verse number 45. It is my distinct privilege and honor this morning to introduce the speaker to some and present to others, Brother Dallas A. Walker, Jr., the minister to the Wyoming Avenue Church of Christ in the great city of Detroit, Michigan. Brother Walker is a distinguished preacher in our brotherhood and has been preaching the gospel of Christ. How many years, Brother Walker? More than 50. More than 50. And then listen, listen. He, he's got this longevity theme about himself. He meant somebody. He, he's got more than 50 in terms of preaching. And if memory serves me properly, he had. Uh, Sister Beverly Walker, who's seated in the rear right now, uh, will shortly celebrate 50 years of, of being married. Yeah. Yeah. So we got we got we got more than 50 years of preaching. Yes, yeah, sir. Almost 50 years of marriage. All right, and 40 years, Amen, serving as a minister to the Wyoming Avenue Church. Yeah. 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 There just seems to be a longevity thing there. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate him for his labor's sake, and I'm I'm glad to be able to have the privilege to present him to some and introduce to others uh, this morning. I had the privilege of he and I, as we were at the Midwestern uh, Midwest uh, uh, lectureship, uh, being able to talk over breakfast, and I, I've been looking forward to his coming, as I'm sure many of you have. Uh, Brother Walker is just the best way for me to describe, at least in my own terms, is. He's just a great orator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody. Uh, he doesn't know that I know, but I, I share this little piece with you. Uh, I was told as I was with some preachers on an occasion, uh, and he was at Southwestern, and Sister Walker was at Southwestern, uh, and that's where uh, their courtship, if memory serves me properly, began. Uh, so I was sitting in the company of some other preachers, and they were saying, well, uh, I, I, I kind of think that Sister Walker was a hot property at Southwestern. <laughs> So they were trying to figure out why, why is it, why, what is it about him in particular that 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 he would be the one. I, I'm talking with a group of preachers, brother. You might not know this. And, and, and they said, somebody said, but then we heard him speak that night. And we said, oh, okay, we know. Yeah, we know. So we're just thankful that God has blessed him to be here and to be with us. Many of you all had the privilege of uh, hearing him on yesterday for the seniors uh, banquet and that kind of thing. Had a great time with that. Uh, again, the Jesse H. Bishop Crusaders blessed us in song. Uh, we were appreciative to that. I just want to take this opportunity to remind you we have modified our day somewhat today. I want to remind you about that. Uh, after we have concluded the worship service, we'll have our Bible class. Uh, and then we'll have a meal together, Lord willing, from 1 to about 2.30 or so. And then Jesse Bishop is going to come and bless us some more events about it. Uh, and then we'll have our afternoon service. That will be an abbreviated service. It's going to conclude our day together. So I can tell already y'all feeling good, amen, yeah. somebody. Yeah. 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 I want to thank both Brother Lyle, amen, somebody, and Brother, uh, Brother Thomas for their uh, sharing with Brother uh, Stewart in song, amen, somebody, and lifting up your voices. I believe the psalmist would say, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Has made a joyful noise, and we certainly appreciate the spirit on this morning. So I'm gonna ask one of them. I don't know who to ask, but so, no uh, let's do it for you. Come on, I'm gonna ask brother, brother David Thomas. Then he's going to come with another verse or so of a song, and then after that, the next question you should hear should be that of brother Dallas Walker, 
minister to the Wyoming Avenue Church of Christ all the way from Detroit, Michigan. Amen. 668. Our God. First and the last stanza. <clears throat> All five. <clears throat> the very Studying 
atoms and molecules, DNA and the elements, while with God, these are nothing more than ancient history. God never did have to figure anything out, learn anything, discover anything, master anything, or solve any mysteries at all. But you see, he has always known everything. He has all power. And his name is great in every sense of the word. And therefore, it is fitting to worship and praise him. Men praise him. Angels praise him. And the Bible says that everything that has breath praise him. And so let us praise him for we have received the benefits of his greatness. And it is our joy to assemble at this place today to praise God, to worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm appreciative to Brother Sims, an outstanding gospel minister. He's professional in every sense of the word. And uh, he's known over this brotherhood and appreciated for his work's sake. And I have developed a tremendous respect for him and his preaching over the years. And uh, certainly I'm appreciative to him and to the leadership and to all of the persons of this congregation uh, for the opportunity to share God's word with you today. I'm appreciative to have my wife and uh, all of the people from uh, the state of Michigan, uh, the Chess H. Bishop Singers, who did just a beautiful job on last evening. And so it's so good to be here uh, with them as we uh, celebrate uh, the efforts that have been and that are being put forth by the seniors of the body of Christ. Amen. We apologize for being just a little tardy, and so we're going to try to make up for that <clears throat> in our lesson this morning, but the scripture that was read uh, was from the 22nd chapter of the gospel according to Matthew. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question. What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? Let us think for just a few moments from the theme or the topic. What think ye of Christ? Wow. Wow. The text has been visited before, but it is worthy to be visited again. <laughs> the question that is posed is an extremely important one. Well. It is important because of who Christ is, what he has done, and where he dwells. It is important because the destiny of all men is tied to it in a manner that cannot be separated. What think ye of Christ is important because it is a question that all people must ultimately answer. Amen. Well, well. The question was originally asked by Jesus himself and it was asked to 
some of his harshest critics, the Pharisees. They seemed always to find some question to put before Jesus. But this time, Jesus puts a question before them. What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? All right. And while they conveniently ignored the first part okay. of the question, what think ye of Christ? They had a ready answer to the second part. Whose son is he? They answered, he is the son of of David. They knew that the Messiah was to come from the line of David. And they answered correctly, but not completely. Right. He was the son of David from a human perspective. But he was not just the son of David. Amen. The reply of Jesus indicated that this was a question that demanded deeper consideration. If Christ is the son of David, then how does David in the spirit call it law? And then Jesus quotes Psalms 110, verse 1. The Lord said to my Lord, sit on my right hand until I put your enemies beneath your feet. If David then calls him Lord, how is he his son? No one was able to answer him a word. Right. Nor did anyone dare from that day on to ask Jesus another question. Mm -hmm. David called Jesus Lord, wow. sovereign, or deity, yeah. which declares that there was more to him than the human side. Wow. Wow. The Pharisees did not address this because they were not ready to recognize the deity of Jesus. They did not want to acknowledge that he was divine. That he shared the same nature as God the Father. But the question what do you think of Christ did not go away? Because you see, it is the question that every person must ultimately answer. All right, all right. To this all-important question, what think ye of Christ? Some people answer, we think nothing of him. He's just a magical figure presented in the Bible. And we do not believe the Bible. The Bible is a book written by man. It is not inspired. It is not scientific. And Jesus is nothing more than a myth wow. created to meet man's psychological need for a crutch, wow. for wow. something supernatural to believe in. He is an invention of man's imagination. All right. And he only impacts man because of the power of faith. But in reality, they say, mm -hmm. We think nothing of him. 
Because he does not represent reality. There are people in this world who really believe that they can dismiss Christ. But they are in for a rude awakening. The Bible tells us that the time is coming when at the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory <coughs> to the glory of the Father and so some people say we think nothing of Jesus it's all just a myth there was no Jesus it is just he is just an invention of the imagination of man what think ye of Christ and then some say we believe in Jesus but just as a historical figure we believe that he lived on earth and that he was a very good man but just a man nevertheless we don't subscribe to this supernatural notion wow. that he was born of a virgin and that he was conceived of the Holy Spirit and that he was in fact God in the flesh. All right. We think that he helped the world. All right. That he had a positive impact upon society and that the world is a better place because of him. But as far as for him coming from God well, and being God, all right. we believe that this is a fabrication by overzealous people who sought to put their own step on religion. <laughs> We need to be reminded that there is little or no difference between those who do not believe in Christ at all and those who believe in him but do not accept the fact that he was divine. Yeah. Yeah. Because if Jesus were just a mere man he was unable to do what needed to be done for members of the human family. If he were just a mere man, then he was powerless to save. He was unable to give assurance of the resurrection. He was unable to represent humanity on the cross and pay the price for the sins of the world. And so just believing that Jesus was a good man is not sufficient. He has to be more than the son of David. But what others think and have thought of Christ is not the most important concern. The most important concern is what you think of Christ and what I think of Christ. What is our belief about him in a world of technological wonders and scientific advancement? Do we really need Jesus? in our time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Does he really make a difference yes, in the lives of people? Yes. Do we really believe that he is all that the Bible declares him to be? Yes. What place does Christ deserve in our lives? 
Are we willing to put our very souls in the hands of Jesus and trust him for our salvation? Are we going to accept what men say about him? Or will we accept what the Bible says about him? Yes, sir. You and I must answer the question individually, specifically, what think ye of Christ? Yes, sir. Well, what does the Bible say about him? The Bible presents Jesus as the image of the invisible God, the firstborn or the origin of all creation. Wow. It presents Jesus as the Word yes, yes. made flesh yes. who was with God yes. and who was God. John Amen. chapter 1. Yes. The Bible presents Jesus as the creative agent of the universe. Yes. It says all things came into being through him. Yes, and apart from him, mm -hmm. nothing came into being that has come Amen. into Amen. being. Yes. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. John chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. Wow. The Colossian letter says, For by him all things were created, both in heaven and in earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. Verse 17 says, He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. Yes. Well, what do you think about Christ? Yes. Well, the Bible says without Jesus, the whole world would fall apart. Yes. Because by Him all things hold together. The Bible says that Jesus came as Savior. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, Luke chapter 19, verse 10. He became sin for us because so that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. The Bible says about Jesus that He tasted death for every man, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. Yes. It portrays Jesus well, as the builder of the church. Yes. Matthew 16, 18, and the purchaser of the church. Right. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Yes. The Bible says that Jesus is the advocate for man, First John Chapter 2, verse 1. All right. That he, he is man's mediator. First Timothy, chapter 2, verse 5. He say, it says that God is our peace. Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 14. And that he is the one in whom we have redemption. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even the forgiveness of sins. Yes. Ephesians, yes. chapter 1, verse 7. Right. And then the Bible says that Jesus is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings right. and Lord Hello. of lords. Yes, 1 Timothy Amen. chapter verse, 6 verse 15. Yes, and so that's what the Bible has to say about who Jesus is. Yes, sir. And so the question becomes what do you think of Christ. All right, Christ. Now. Who is he? What do you really think 
about Jesus. If you believe, and if we believe, what the Bible says about him, then he will profoundly affect our lives. He will affect our lives. He will change our lives. He will change our speech. He will change our behavior. He will change our priorities. If we believe what the Bible says about who he is. And so, in my mind, we say there are a lot of issues facing the church today. But in my mind, that's the greatest issue that's facing the church today. Amen. It's not immorality per se. It's not worldliness per se. But the greatest issue facing the church is what do you think yes, sir. of Jesus? Wow. Wow. Because you see, if we have the right impression of Jesus, then that makes all of the difference in the world. That's how we behave. If he's, our, if he's our Savior, if He's our example, if He's our advocate, then that means we have to have a certain respect for Him. It's necessary to walk with Him. It's necessary to obey Him. It's necessary to identify with him. Amen. What we think of Christ Amen. does everything in determining how we respond Amen. to Jesus. Yeah. So Jesus asked the Pharisees, what do you think about Jesus? <laughs> Whose son is he? That's the question you have to ask. And he asked this to us as individuals yeah. today. All right. What do you really think of Jesus? Who was he? If he is who the Bible says he is, then that ought to make a difference in your life. And mine. He's offering himself to members of the human family as the savior of the world. If we view him as the savior of the world, that means we will Surrender to his will and allow the Lord to save us. Many people want to be saved, but they don't want to be saved from their sins. We want to be saved from poverty. We want to be saved from ignorance. We want to be saved from pain. We want to be saved from discomfort. And we seek all of these means to be saved. If we don't accept Jesus yeah. to be saved from our sins. And he is our Savior today. Do you believe what the Bible says about Jesus? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That he is our Savior and that we need a Savior? Have you surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and to the authority of Jesus Christ? If you haven't, then this is a day of decision. This is a day of decision for you. And, and the question is not what someone else thinks about Jesus. But you see, it's a personal question. The question is, what do you think about Jesus? And if you haven't accepted him, this is the great day for your deliverance. This is the great day of decision. This is the the the. the opportune moment for you to yield to the will of God. Amen. If you believe that he is Savior and you have not accepted him as Savior, this is the time to do so. Yes. The Bible says when we come to the Lord, it's necessary to, to come to the Lord in faith. Yes. Yes. We can't please God unless we have faith. Yes. For whoever comes to him must Believe that he is, that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. It's necessary to turn from the lifestyle of sin. That's what the Bible calls repentance. Confess Jesus to be God's only begotten son. And then be buried with him in water baptism. 
for the remission of all of your sins. Yes. Yes. It is then that you become clothed with Christ. Yes. It is then that all the past sins are forgiven yes. and you become a new spiritual creation yes. in the eyes of God. Wow. It is then when you are baptized that you are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. God wants to save you. Christ wants to save you. And if you will look upon him as savior today, then you can leave this place knowing that you have made your peace with God. Sometimes Members of the body of Christ seemingly forget who Jesus is. All right, now. Come on, brother. And sometimes we, we, we move away from our place of safety. Yes, sir. And we, 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 we leave the place uh, where all of the spiritual privileges are. Yes, sir. And we wander back off into a world of degradation and of sin and of alienation. Amen. But it's so wonderful that God does not cast us off forever. Amen. When we act foolishly, and when we do things according that are not according to God's divine will, He's still loving and yes. kind and Yes, sir. And Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. And when we repent of our sins, and when we confess our sins, He claims us again yes, sir. as His own dear children. Amen. And gives to us every spiritual blessing in heaven and places. Christ Jesus. There are a lot of questions in life that can be ignored. There are a lot of questions that people can put aside and not have to consider anymore in life. But the question, what think ye of Christ, is a question that every person is going to have to answer. And you will have to answer that question at one time or another. Why not answer it today? Yes, Say, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus is Savior. I believe that He is Mediator. I believe that He is Advocate. And I believe that one day He's coming back. Yes, sir. To receive believe. His church. Better believe. If you're of this disposition and believe today, then this is your time to respond to the gospel calling. We trust that you will, even right now as we stand and sing the hymn of invitation. Right.